Good morning. This is Jason D coming live at you again. This is a uh, take two. I did a video uh, a few minutes ago and wasn't happy with how it came out, so I decided to scrap it. But uh, yeah, it's about uh, 11 o'clock here on a Saturday. It is uh, the uh, just about the beginning of the summer solstice. The solstice is officially uh, on Wednesday. Today was the big Rockland summer solstice block party they're still having the event the weather is uh is total crap today it's gonna rain all day and into the night it's raining right now we were supposed to play at the festival today the street party with quantum we usually play there every year it's always a blast and it's always fun and we get to we usually play like an hour and a half or two hours and and we, uh, you know, we have a long tradition with uh, with doing this uh, party, and so we were going to pretty much, you know, cancel it because of the weather. And I was looking into alternatives, maybe a backup plan for some kind of coverage, and there was no help from really anyone with that. So, but then they had this plan. The organizers decided to do it, uh, break it into two days. So they had it yesterday, the start yesterday. Friday and then also today usually it's all in one day so it was pretty last minute so we were I was able to do it and unfortunately Mike could not do it because he was out on his boat so I went ahead and played and he was almost going to do it but then it was cutting it too close so and the weather was beautiful yesterday and Friday it was a really beautiful day so you know, I was glad to do it. I was glad we didn't have to cancel it. It was a little bit more mellow. Usually Saturday it's jamming and there's like tons of people around and it's like this whole big thing. But, uh, you know, the weather is going to be crappy all day and and so, but they're still doing it. I don't know how, but they're going to still do it. But I was glad we were able to play yesterday. And so Friday, it was, it was nowhere as near as many people as there usually is because it's still like a work hour time. Uh, work day because it was four o'clock that the whole thing started and people a lot of people are still at work but there was still you know a pretty good amount of people around it was still fun the weather was really nice so it ended up being worthwhile and I definitely missed having Mike on board you know but it was fun anyway to, to still play and not have to cancel it so and the official solstice is on uh, Wednesday uh, next week so but anyway, so like lately, the videos I've been doing, I've been doing all kinds of coverage. Uh, uh, I've been buying a ton of movies. I did, uh, I've been doing all kinds of, all the videos I've been doing lately have pretty much been focused on this giant pile of movies that, I, that I've accumulated. And it's been amazing. I've had so many great discoveries. A lot of exploitation movies, a lot of slasher movies I discovered. That I that I own, I got a couple of really great DVD combo packs from Goodwill that had a whole bunch of these exploitation movies on on, on them that I had never seen before, slasher movies and uh, just really great. So really lucked out with that. So I you know spent a lot of time watching all of those videos, and then the last weekend or the weekend before last, I should say, Opera House Video, the video shop that I go to in Belfast had a massive sale so I went there and bought a whole ton of other movies so and then I also went to uh, Best Buy around that time so like there were like three three times in the last few weeks that I went and bought a serious uh, pile of movies so it's been pretty awesome a lot of these movies I haven't seen before I uh, I have gotten some Blu-rays. I've done some shows on some other Blu-ray movies that I've done, that I've seen, and they were mostly from movies from uh, that I purchased at uh, Bull Moose. Really great, fantastic movies. A lot of cool discoveries. And so lately, I've been doing videos on all of the. Um, videos I got at Opera House Video. So I didn't get a whole ton of Blu-rays, but I did get about five or six mostly when I ended up buying uh, the I mostly got DVDs but they're good quality and I was they were super cheap so you know I try to as a fan as a film fanatic and as a collector I try to only buy blu-rays 
because of the you know they're just superior the, the quality is just superior and they always come with really great spe special features for, for for the most part but a lot of DVD, a lot of the dvds that they had for sale were really good i found some really obscure movies and they're actually some of them are really good quality so i bought them i just needed to but today's show is on this amazing freaking movie Django Unchained by the one and only Quentin Tarantino. Uh, my God, I watched this last night, finished it up last night, and I just totally forgot what a masterpiece this movie is. I've actually only seen this movie one time, which is crazy. Jamie Foxx um, is the star of this movie. I mean, the cast is just incredible. This movie came out in 2012. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe it came out that long ago. But I only, I've only seen Django Unchained once, and I remember it being just a bloody, you know, just a total bloodbath. And holy shit, this movie is like, you know, I'm a huge Tarantino fan. I love. I love all of his films. Probably my favorite overall um, is probably like Reservoir Dogs. But I love his films. I really love the Kill Bill uh, movies. Those are just amazing. I love Inglorious Bastards. I really... The Hateful Eight is one of my favorites. I love Jackie Brown. Uh, Pulp Fiction, of course. Amazing. The only movie of his that I don't really like that I think is kind of a clunker is Death Proof. I do want to see it again, but that movie I always felt really did drag ass and was a disappointment. and kind of got lost in its own dialogue starring Kurt Russell, but I do need to see it again. Um, I kind of want to give it a chance again. But everything else by Quentin Tarantino is just, uh, I feel like, spectacular. Once Upon a Time... Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which was his last movie, I think is just a masterpiece as well. That also stars Leonardo DiCaprio, as as does this. And this the cast in this movie, like I, like I said, is just absolutely incredible. Christopher Waltz, amazing in this. He was in Inglorious Bastards. Jamie Foxx, of course. Samuel Jackson who has the biggest track record of being in all of Tarantino's movies. This is one of his best acting roles. Like, he literally is unrecognizable in this movie. He plays this really old, old man. Uh, Kerry Washington is just incredible. Of course, Leonardo DiCaprio. Don Johnson, one of my favorite character actors of all time. He's just, he's not in the movie very, very long, but he's just so badass. I love Don Johnson to death. He's one of my favorite actors. Of course, Leonardo DiCaprio, I really am a huge fan of his work. And he plays one of the most disgusting, vile, and evil characters ever on the big screen. I mean, he his character is just so unbelievably evil in this movie. And I forgot how incredible this movie is. The, the Blu-ray transfer is just incredible. It comes with pretty good amount of special features i started watching the special features last night there's a really good uh you know there's some couple, couple really great features on here a lot of cool interviews uh it's you know pretty damn good I, I was, i'm pretty impressed but this movie is just this movie is just so epic i i almost felt as much this is I I do believe this might be the first Tarantino movie I've reviewed for this channel, which is kind of crazy because I I love Tarantino. I think he's obviously he's obviously one of the most popular. He's obviously one of the most talked about directors, and I think rightfully so. But I do believe that this is the first Tarantino movie uh, that I've reviewed on this channel, which is kind of weird because I'm such a huge fan. But again, I'm inundated with so many other movies I want to get to, and you know I try to do. Lots of shows on movies that are really obscure, but again, I I love I love to mix things up, and I after I watched this, and I, after I finished it up, I was like, my first feeling was, wow, I think this might be my favorite Tarantino movie. 
I'm a huge fan of westerns. He was enamored with Sergio Leone as a major influence as a, direct, as a director. Um, you know, obviously very, very much inspired by and has taken a lot from the spaghetti western genre, as well as just all of the great Italian directors. The story is just, I mean, the writing is just so incredible. It's essentially a revenge tale. And it's just, it's so good. It's so well conceived. The acting is just so flawless. The writing is just so great. There's so much intensity. There's every character, even DiCaprio, you have, you you like him. I found myself really lo loving his character, but then you're also just like, completely disgusted by the things that he does and his whole like his whole world like it's unbelievable um and but the, the other thing that i was just blown away is that the violence in this movie is just like so incredibly gory this i think this is definitely the most gory movie he's ever made like it's brutal it's a it is literally a fucking bloodbath this movie and it's like so over the top but it just totally works and again, with Tarantino, everything is based on the dialogue. Everything is based on what the characters are saying to one another. And, when, and, and whenever there are situations where there's violence, especially in this movie, it is even more uh, satisfying and intense because you have this downtime where you're, you're essentially watching these characters talk in a room. But it's so engaging and there's all this build up. So when explosive things happen on a big screen, it's, you know, it is at a whole nother level. The cinematography for this movie is just unbelievably gorgeous. He's an, Tarantino's obviously known for his, you know, very stylized approach. You know, he obviously is a walking encyclopedia of movies and movie references anybody who's seen inter anybody who has seen interviews with him over the years you know and he's a self-made man he never went to film school he just basically learned how to make films from being such a fan of films and working in a video store for years and being obsessed with the medium that's how he learned and it's just master storytelling and the gore in this film, I feel, is like, it's so out of control and so outrageous that it's it's up there with like, you know, like something Lucio Fulci would make, you know, some, it has a, and obviously this movie is his, his, kind of his, one of his love letters to like the spaghetti westerns, but it just has this really interesting Italian vibe to it. But yet, you know, it is totally different. It has its own voice. You can see in his work, and you can see in Tarantino's work all of his influences, but he messes, the, messes with your expectation. Tarantino has said famously that he can't really do an all-inclusive kind of genre movie. He'll, like, take bits and pieces from different genres. But he said he can't, like he, as a filmmaker and as a creator, he said that he can't like go into a thing and say, well, he's going to just make a Western or he's going to just make an action movie. He's going to be blending in different elements all the time. And he's going to mess with the, he's going to, he's going to show like those characteristics of those genres or directors that he was inspired by. But at the same time, he's going to, mess with your expectations and he's also gonna take it into different avenues and he does that very much like this movie is very much a spaghetti western but then it goes into very different area very different uh territory the, the areas that he covers this movie the, the main focus of this movie is about uh slavery and it takes place right before the civil war and so at the heart of the movie, it's incredibly tragic and it's really brutal and it's, you know, based on historic accounts and our, you know, incredibly horrible history as a human species. 
and you don't really see that tackled too often in straight up spaghetti westerns or you know even uh, i kind of feel like that's even a taboo subject for a lot of films to to tackle even though there's a lot more awareness to the atrocities that what ha- that happened and that all of these things happened not all that long ago you know and we're still dealing with racism every day but so in that regard he really does something different and as far as the way the characters and the way the structure of the narrative goes it goes in very different directions that is not really something that a spaghetti western necessarily does but the framework is spaghetti western and that's the thing that's so amazing about with what tarantino does he'll you can see his influences, but he always does something different. And he always pushes things or puts things in a different, uh, you know, in a different area where you wouldn't expect the genre to go. And, you know, that's the thing. That's the thing that's amazing with him. He said, like, I remember seeing an interview where he couldn't really do, he loves horror films, but he couldn't do a straight up horror film. He would, he would do a film, you know, that was very inspired by that genre, but he would have to mess with the expectations or the tropes that that come that that you know kind of entails, and he does that with every genre, every genre of film, you know, uh, and every film that he does, and and I think that that is that's one of the reasons I think he's one of the most um, creative people around, and yeah, my and Jamie Fox in this movie is just like unbelievable. So much great chemistry on the big screen. The cinema, every every frame of this film is like an art piece. Like it's just so gorgeous to look at. The music is just incredible. Um, even the use of music in this film, he uses a lot of. Well, this came out in 2012 now, but he uses a lot of like, at that time, kind of modern hip hop, which really messes with the idea of thinking that it's a straight up spaghetti western. It puts it in a very different, you know, kind of light. Creates this different aesthetic. So it doesn't have that. But yet he'll have the spaghetti western, Ennio Morricone kind of vibe to it also. That's another, you know, thing that he does in a lot of his movies. But what a masterpiece. Um, I own quite a few Tarantino movies. I don't own a whole bunch of them on Blu-ray, which is weird. I don't know why. I do own... Glorious Bastards on Blu-ray, and I know I own one or two others. I have a lot of his films on DVD. Uh, I have Kill Bill on Blu-ray. But, my God, what a masterpiece. And I uh, I can't believe I've only... This was only the second time I've seen this movie, and I can't wait to watch it again. Uh, what an epic movie. So this is Jason Dean, and if you live in a hole and you've never seen Django Unchained, got to see this movie it is like it's just so badass thanks again for your support keep the comments coming and we will see you next time peace